You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. Nope, not when I have the power of anime on my side. Can you beat Dark Souls 2 with weapon arts only? Yes, of course, if weapon do damage, boss go ouch. Let's make it slightly more interesting. I can only do damage using weapon arts. More on what that means later. But while I can use any weapon art I want for clearing areas, I have to use a different weapon for each different boss. Get it? Got it? Good. No party walking allowed, and the only goal is to get one of the game's endings, as the rules make all bosses not doable. Sit back down, lad. This isn't particularly hard, so let's just have some fun with some interesting weapons, shall we? Time to become the poster boy for repair powders. Of course, nobody wants their poster to look like this, but that's where this video's sponsor, Displate, comes in helping you to explore your passion in the form of durable, high-quality metal posters with a wide range of over 1.3 million licensed designs from your favourite artists, games, movies and much more. I'm genuinely a big fan of this product. The prints look great, frayed tattered edges are a thing of the past and installing them is so simple even my three-button mashing primate brain can cope with it. Just use one of the wipes provided to clean your chosen wall Wait a few minutes for it to dry, stick this handy sticker down, attach the magnetic plate to it, and it's job done. Magnet hold metal, metal look good. Simple science, and it's also super easy to readjust your posters or swap them around on a whim. You can get your very own display delivered within four to five business days in secure, sturdy and recyclable packaging that ensures it will arrive in tip-top condition. And best of all, because we all love being environmentally friendly, Displate will plant a tree for every poster purchased. Not in your house though, don't panic. Get yourself a slice of art from the link in the description below. And if you order by the 5th of November, you can get 32% off when buying one to two posters or a massive 38% off if ordering three or more. And now sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the video. By a mana, by a mana, by a mana! I can't believe it's you! The Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Entertainment District Arc! Swordsman class for the high decks and watermelon shirt, bonfire pumpkin as a gift, and it was off to Majula to admire the view, pick up some useful bits and pieces, get an almost useless ring from Solden, and meet with the Emerald Herald, who could hardly bring herself to look at me. The usual. So, how does this work? Well, firstly, we need to define weapon arts, since that terminology only came into play in DS3. And unlike that game and Elden Ring, in which weapon arts are clearly described, available on every weapon, usually consume FP, and are mapped to the left shoulder button, when Dark Souls first introduced this idea, the weapon arts were few and far between, were usually tied to the weapon's heavy attack, and also consumed durability. Because fuck you, I guess. Of course, Dark Souls 1 walked so that Dark Souls 2 could run. Awkwardly, with no stamina. See, Dark Souls 2 adds a good number of weapons that we might consider to have weapon arts, if you squint a little. Sometimes these are listed as a special attack, but not always. Does one button press do a fancy combo, or shoot magic-y stuff, or buff itself? Not that this last one is much use for the run. We can probably include it. Problem is, when I say a good number of weapons, I actually mean a pretty terrible number, since with the restriction of one boss per weapon, there are nowhere near enough weapons to beat every boss. And even then, since the majority of these are locked behind bosses, either because of where they're located or because you need a boss soul to craft them, Coming up with a viable way to route this is the interesting part here, because, let's be honest, DS2 isn't exactly difficult to beat. How to do this? Well, shut the hell up and let me tell you a story. Bye. 
First up, let's foray into the fun and fantastical foliage of the Forest of Fallen, uh, for giants. I can never remember what this item here is. Oh, good. 20 wooden bolts. Totally worth it. After collecting the repair powder, all the titanite shards, and some important keys from Kale and Melentia, I headed out to Hydes to make Dragon Rider do an opsy. I didn't attack him, so this doesn't break my rules. Time to spend some money, since you can't take it with you when you're gone. So I purchased the cat ring and pumped the rest into decks, before moving onwards to No Man's Wharf. There's nothing of note weapon-wise in this area, but I could pick up more shards, consumable souls, and a fragrant branch of yore. I said a fragrant branch of yore. Thanks. Popping the souls I'd collected got me up to 25 decks. I put the rest into vigor because I was made of toilet paper, used the branch to relax Rosabeth, and gave her the best fashion I could muster up at this point in time. Played Kiss Chase with the Big Belly Boys, and progressed onwards to Shaded Ruins, collecting the Claranthi Ring along the way for that sweet, sweet stamina regen. Oh, yeah, this prick. More consumable souls means more levels into Vigor, and everyone's favourite, ADP. And it was time to head to Huntsman's Copse and drop down into the giant basilisk pit for my first weapon of the run, Rykard's Rapier, with its special attack. Sweater. Yeah, you just poke stuff repeatedly really quickly, and pressing R2 again during the first part of the animation extends it. Pretty cool. You know what's a lot less cool? Yeah. I thought you were that bastard for a moment. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm the other bastard. Totally different guy. With a plus four rapier and some spicy blade sauce, I was ready to properly take on a boss. So I dropped down the Majula Pit. No, not that far down. And avoided the bomb squad to reach the gutter. This place is such a troll sometimes. Good thing I am the world's greatest person to ever do jumping. Nobody jumps like me. Black Gulch was as much of an appalling hellhole as ever, but I was only here for one thing. The Rotten. How hard can this be? Okay, you can put me down now. Easy first try. After consuming the funny limbs guy's soul and levelling up, I returned to the gulch to introduce some giants to the combo of poison and Rykard's rapier for the forgotten key. It's okay FromSoft, I didn't want to hit him anyway. With the key, I could access Shulva and after sprinting through to the Tower of Prayer bonfire and onwards past some flame-grilled friends, I collected the first of several weapons available from this area. The Puzzling Stone Sword. Whoa man, I can see the very fabric of the universe itself. Next, Flynn's Ring, because why wouldn't you? And up to the next bonfire to grab another weapon, the Sanctum Crossbow. Finally, I danced around the enemies in the area until I got one to drop the last weapon for now. The Sanctum Repeating Crossbow. No relation to the previous weapon. Good job, dumbass. Ow, 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 ow. With a choice of weapons at my fingertips, I put a couple of upgrades into each for a tiny bit more oomph and returned to the Shaded Ruins to kill a stone lion, thank you very much, and free Ornifex whose name totally coincidentally rhymes with horny sex, but don't read too much into that. Time for Najka, and I settled on the Sanctum Crossbow, with its special attack... Mamma mia, I burned the meatballs! Yeah, it just shoots a ball of dark. Much excitement. 
Obviously, this fight is no real issue, although, because a lot of these special attacks lock you into longer animations, you always run the risk of getting counter-slapped while you're rooted to the spot. But my only real worry was running out of repair powders. Of course, I planned this perfectly, and it wasn't just an extremely lucky guess, because I am a pro. Onwards to Brightstone, and the scariest boss ever made, the fearsome room full of random enemies. Time to crack the whip. Both the one-handed and two-handed heavy attacks of the puzzling stone sword could be considered for this run, but I settled on the two-handed variant. The Pirouette of Pain! Whatever I used here would pretty much feel like a waste of a weapon, but at least this attack clears out the floor crawlers easily. It's also pretty damn useful for dealing with the Brightstone Spiders, so that's a bonus. By now, I had enough souls to reach 15 int, which would allow me to use the Repair Sorcery. So I paid Falcon a visit, who watched me whip and nene his sorry ass into next week. This wasn't just pointless NPC torture. Killing him lets you buy the Hexa Hood from Melentia, which would increase my casts of the Repair Sorcery by a massive... um... one? I still had one more weapon left over from my vacation to Shulva. The Sanctum Repeating Crossbow. With its special attack. Mamma mia, I burned another batch of meatballs. Totally different to the Sanctum Crossbow, I promise. Now, everyone loves the classic Ornstein and Smo fight from Dark Souls 1, right? Well, Dark Souls 1 walked so that Dark Souls 2 could run. Awkwardly, with no stamina. Look, I know I've already made that joke once, but, well, it's a running joke. Ooh, you suck! You see, Dark Souls 2 brings us the cooler Ornstein. One small problem I forgot to consider, he's ridiculously resistant to dark, and my soul couldn't handle farming that many repair powders or amber herbs. God damn it, time for plan B. That's B for Blast the Giant. Killing the big guy gives you the soldier's key, which in turn gives you access to pick up the Grand Lance, and its weapon art. Stick em with the pointy end. Now, this might be a slightly controversial choice, as this attack isn't unique to this specific weapon. However, it would have been a weapon art if this was DS3 or Elden Ring, so I'm counting it. But I won't let myself use any other weapons that share this moveset. Report me to the official board of DS2 challenge runs if you have an issue with that. This thing is pretty strong, even without any upgrades. So, I took it back to the old dragon fucker to test it out. I ate a couple of hits to the face, for science, but overall, this was as challenging as a capture if you're not a robot. Which, of course, I'm not. Beep boop. Man, I love Lower Brightstone. It's such fun, and definitely doesn't make me want to hole myself into Satan's sandy butthole. With the area cleared out, I could catch up with Ornifex and craft my first boss weapon, the Dragon Slayer Spear. I'll put that one aside for later, but for now, I went to Black Gulch, which was as much of an appalling hellhole as ever. But I was only here for one thing, the Rotten. How hard can this be? Uh, wait, this seems strangely familiar. Is this a spooky case of deja vu? Is this a mystery from Scooby Doo? Why am I here fighting this pile of poo? Okay, here's what I actually said earlier. I have to use a different weapon for each different boss. I never mentioned anything about not being able to kill the same boss with the same weapon more than once. See, here's the thing. Some of the paths to the primal bonfires just aren't worth doing on this run. 
because they give access to fewer weapons than there are bosses to kill. So both Iron Keep and Sinner's Rise were off the table. I know, no Smelter Sword or Iron King Hammer. Boo hoo, get over it. In order to access the Shrine of Winter without all primal bonfires, you need 1 million soul memory. And as you probably know, the best way to get this is to burn bonfire ascetics in the gulch so you can fight the rotten four times in a row. However, for this run, three times would be enough, as I had other plans. Okay, how am I still alive? Look, I'm rusty, okay? I haven't fought this guy in so long. The Rotten's boss soul can be traded for the Butcher Knife, and you could argue that its heavy attack is unique enough to be included here. But I was in two minds about it and ultimately discounted it. However, there is another old one that does drop something I could use. Freya. And what better weapon to use than the Dragon Slayer Spear, and its special attack... Zeus's Toothpick! It shoots lightning, what more do you want? I could only really spare the materials to get it to plus two. And although the damage wasn't too bad, maybe? Who knows, given DS2's, um, unique way of displaying damage. The numbers, basically. What do they mean? The real issue was that putting out my torch to use the repair sorcery was a big no-no, unless you like being swarmed by spiders. So, repair powders were the way to go, as this weapon art does a ton of durability damage. Sadly, these are pretty hard to come by in the early game, but there is one place I could farm them, and that's from the Grave of Saints. Oh good, yet another copy of Warmth. With a good stack of powders in my pocket, I was ready for Freya. This was more tedious than anything, and I got a little impatient at times, especially if she jumps up just as you charge up the attack, causing you to miss. But soon enough, the nice spider lady died, for now, and I returned to Majula to bask in my glorious victory. Next stop, Donna and Tello to do some trading. Here, is this smooth enough for you? Lovely. The Channeler's Trident has a couple of unique moves under its belt. Pressing heavy attack while two-handing it gives you a damage buff for a short while, which wouldn't really come in that useful in the scenario I plan to use it. But hey, it looks goofy at least. The one-handed heavy attack, however, is a thrust which makes the end of the trident spin, hitting the enemy multiple times in the process. I like to call this one... Wrap the spaghetti! So far, I'd been getting by with low-level weapon upgrades, but I'd need something a little meatier for what I had in mind. So it was time for a little farming. Come here and give me your titanite shards, peasant! Large shards can be farmed from the forbidden fleshlights in the gulch, and I already had enough chunks and slabs in reserve to be able to plus 10 the trident. So let's go killers and Elana, shall we? The animation is fairly slow, but the damage output is pretty solid, especially with some resins. The main problem here is the skellies. Trying to kill them was more effort than it's worth, so after a while I decided to just ignore them. And even though having no poise is really annoying when you get staggered by a blade that didn't even touch you, this turned out to be the right decision. Okay, one more hit and she's dead. Oh. Well, fuck you too. Again.
Whilst Freya's soul does let you craft the Spider Fang, which has a special attack that shoots webs which slow enemies down, this isn't very useful. However, kill her again on NG Plus onwards, and she also drops the old Pale Drake soul, which can be traded for that From Software classic, the Moonlight Greatsword. Suck it, Benhart. Guess it's back to Freya again. You know the drill. With Spider Mom finally dead for good, I had hit the magic number of one million souls. Your soul is still frail and pallid. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. After treating myself to a level or two, I entered the castle itself, which would give me access to several options. That ain't the invisible. Wellager sells the bracing knuckle ring plus one, which slows down the rate at which equipment degrades as well as infinite repair powders, which would both come in extremely useful, since Rapier is an anagram of repair. I never want to see another rat again. Whilst here, I could also pick up the frozen flower and make my way to Elaeum Lois to fix their air conditioning problem. <sighs> no comment. I said no, oh, for crying out loud. Now, there's nothing I like more than killing the same enemies over and over to try and get a weapon with dogshit drop rates, while watching them drop a version of said weapon on the floor every time they die. What a fun mechanic! After over an hour of this tedium, I finally found what I'd been looking for, the Ice Rapier, which is generally a monster of a weapon, with the added bonus that the heavy attack shoots out a magic spear of... I don't know, something magic-y. Shooting white stuff. I upgraded it to plus four, since I'd be using this for most of the non-boss encounters going forwards anyway, and stepped into the icy mists to have a magic darts contest with Arva. What's new, pussycat? Ow, 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 ow. Dream on, lady. I cannot be contained. With the aircon stabilised, I could now collect three items from the area. The dark clutch ring, a soul vessel, and most importantly, the bone fist. Not a sex toy, sadly. With the soul vessel, I respect to give myself 45 dex and 22 strength because this stat spread allows you to power stance the bone fist with your bare left hand. In turn, unlocking a powerful energy blast with the heavy attack. No idea what to call this one. No, I got nothing. I couldn't think of a name. Man, it would be pretty embarrassing if my lack of poise caused me to die to the twin fatties. Nice combo, thanks. I obviously wasn't going to make that mistake again. Poor Steen and No died easily. I progressed into the castle, obtained the key to the King's Passage, and returned to Medulla Oblongata to prepare my next weapon, the Ivory Straight Sword, which can be traded with Ornifex for Arva's soul. This one's a grower, not a shower, and arguably every attack with this little beauty could be considered a special attack. But for the purposes of this run, I would be sticking to the two-handed heavy. 
morning glory. This attack wrecks. To the point where even upgrading it just to plus one was overkill for the looking glass knight. Just don't hit the shield and you're golden here. Dark Souls is hard. Say what now? The shrine was its usual self. Spammy bullshit, hot milfinitos in your area looking for singing action, more spammy bullshit, etc. Not a great deal of note to pick up here, but there is one interesting weapon which can be found behind a Pharos lockstone. The Helix Halberd. The heavy attack of this weapon extends a spike from the end of the halberd, which can either hit by itself or in conjunction with the two blades either side of it. Like so. Extendo Penetrator! Now, you might dispute this weapon's inclusion, but, well, I'll let you into a little secret. I don't really care. And it seemed fitting to poke the stupid frog thing to death with something found within its own area. Also, you could probably beat this boss just by looking at it in the wrong way, let's be honest. There's nothing like being invaded by Forlorn when you're trying to get through a fun area, and the Undead Crypt is nothing like a fun area. At least I could pick up a direct upgrade to the Bracing Knuckle Ring here, and after opening up the shortcut, I was ready to forge my next weapon, the Moonlight Greatsword, with its weapon art, a slice of moon pie. There are both one and two handed versions of this iconic weapon's special attack, and these can also be comboed into a follow up. But as I only leveled it to plus two, I stuck to the two handed version for a bit more kick. Nyeh! 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 What's the worst boss in DS2, and why is it actually the Guardian Dragon? Yeah, it's fine mate, I didn't want to fight you anyway. I decided to use Velstat's weapon for this fight, the Sacred Chime Hammer, and if you press the heavy attack while two-handing, something wonderful happens. For whom the bell tolls. Yeah, I lied, it isn't that wonderful, it just shoots out three slow dot projectiles that track when locked on. But Guardian Dragon isn't particularly resistant to dark, so I figured this would work well. What I didn't count on was him completely refusing to stay on the ground and spending 90% of the fight crawling around the ceiling like that thing from the grudge. So that's nice. Gotta love wasting my life on this guy. With that out of the way, it was onwards down the shaky bridge to the Dragon Shrine for some good old fashioned dueling. Is it my turn yet? Okay, guess not. After finishing off the rest of the jewels, grabbing the third dragon ring for some extra pep in my step, killing the invader, and listening to the ancient dragon spouting some weird nonsense to get the ashen mist heart, I could delve into some memories. Don't mind me guys, you carry on. By returning to Freya's arena with the Ashen Mist Heart, you can enter the Ancient Dragon memory and get its soul, which can be traded with Ornifex for a pretty sweet weapon, the Curved Dragon Greatsword, made from 100% Curved Dragons. It didn't seem right to leave the Ancient Dragon alive after taking its soul though, so I respect into 28 Faith, killed the first dragon in the area for the Flame Quartz Ring plus two, looted some petrified dragon bones, and upgraded the Wrathful Axe to plus two. This weapon can be traded for Elana's soul, and the weapon art casts a wave of dark magic that also does poison build up. Like so. Cloudy with a chance of death. Ancient Dragon is one of those fights that's hard, until you realize that it isn't. Just stand between these toes and, well, that's mostly it. Move out of the way if it raises its foot, and run towards its tail if it happens to fly, but most of the time you can happily camp here and tickle it to death. Oh, so close, you almost had me. Not close enough though.
The end game was looming over me ominously, like an angry parent with a belt. But I was running out of petrified dragon bones for my ever increasing stockpile of boss weapons. So I went and farmed some more by killing Barney the Dinosaur's half-wit cousins in the lair of the imperfect, and leveled the curved dragon greatsword to plus two, ready to take on Watcher and Defender. The weapon art of this greatsword fires out a blast of, I don't know, something, similar to the Drake sword in DS1, which spreads outwards in a cone shape, meaning it's perfect for hitting multiple enemies at once. I like to call it... The Winds of Change! Watcher and Defender are Ornstein and Smo if you removed anything actually good from the fight. Since there are no environmental features to keep them separated, Spatial awareness is important here. <clears throat> the next attempt went much better, even though with two of them on your butt it's hard to find windows to safely attack without getting sucker punched. But at least the weapon art doesn't do a ton of durability damage. And also, ducking under this sword swipe is extremely satisfying. Of course, I planned it perfectly to be able to kill the Watcher as they went to revive the defend- Son of a bitch. Of course, I planned it perfectly to be able to kill the Defender as they went to revive the Watcher. The duo were dutifully deceased, and I could move onwards to the Giant Lord. The Guardian Dragon Soul gives us a choice of two weapons we could use for this run. The Drakewing Ultra Greatsword is arguably the better option, so let's use the other one instead. The Spitfire Spear, with its interesting looking weapon art, Spicy tomato on a stick! It shoots fire. That's it. But let's be real. If you stand here, Giant Lord has literally only two moves. And even though the damage was garbage, as the weapon was unupgraded, this was no problem. Uh oh. Well, that's a first. I grudgingly upgraded the spear to plus one, and that proved to be just enough damage to get me over the line in time and with the Giant Lord taken care of, I could finally return to Nishandra to finish the game. You have proven yourself to me. I don't even know who you are. My weapon of choice for this fight would be the Thorned Greatsword, which can be traded with Ornifex for the Looking Glass Knight's soul. Come on, anime attack voiceover guy. Do your thing. Power Spikes! Both the one-handed and two-handed heavy attacks fire a bolt of lightning, and can also be comboed into a follow-up. Simple stuff. One thing I normally do to make Nashandra's fight slightly less annoying is to light all the torches in the gutter to spawn in the gutter denizen invader in order to obtain the Black Witch Veil, vale, which surprisingly isn't the name of an emo band. Wearing this negates the curse effect from Nashandra's gas problem, I switched up to the puzzling stone sword to clear the clouds which is fine as they're not an enemy, and the rest of the fight is no issue, as long as you don't get clipped by the laser or, you know, anything else really. That goes without saying. In a subtle reference to the British monarchy, the Queen died, some giants played rugby, they locked me away forever, which was probably for the best, the end credits rolled for approximately four hours, and it was done. I had beaten Dark Souls 2 with weapon arts only. Nishandra's soul can be traded for another viable weapon, the Bow of Want, and even though there's no Aldia on this run, since I never lit all the primal bonfires, it at least seemed appropriate to use Nishandra's weapon to pull Grandpa Vendrick out of his misery by walking around behind his left leg for... 14 minutes? Holy shit. Yeah, this damage is not good, but I didn't get hit once, so that's something I guess? Enjoy, and I'll catch you all next time when we try to answer the question. Can you beat the urge to eat shredded cheese from the bag at 3am?